I'm Janet Harvey, CEO of Invite Change. And as a professional coach for nearly 30 years now, working with leaders and their teams, I want to give you some straight talk, three ideas that maybe are a little different than what you're going to be doing and more about how to reestablish your workplace health and well-being and camaraderie. The first point I want to make is to choose curious compassion. This is what I mean about this. We all have been through an experience. You might be thinking it's the same for every person, and the truth is it's not. While we've all sheltered in place, each person has had a different circumstance in their home, and they have had an opportunity to really think about, boy, what do I value? We've slowed things down. People have been more reflective. They've been thinking more internally about what they value. When you take the time to be with them and genuinely be curious about what they experience, not only are you signaling respect, but you're also giving people an opportunity to tell you, what do they want now? How does this influence the way they want to experience the workplace? Your job, if you are a team leader, or a leader of leaders is to be able to create an environment where people can make the adjustments that they are feeling called to now, having had this time for introspection. The second point I call anticipate and aspire. And what I'm inviting you to examine here is, guess what? Your customers have also had an experience that's caused them to rethink what they value and what matters to them. It would be fabulous to spend some time giving your team an opportunity to imagine a different customer-centric relationship. How might they use that same curious compassion that you modeled with them in their conversations with customers and start to get an appreciation for how have things shifted? What do they value about you as an organization? What is the way now that they would like to have a relationship with you? They might actually have decided that this virtual self-service environment really matches their lifestyle. How do you do more of that instead of seeing it as an emergency status? So this is an opportunity for you to bring your team together and give them an opportunity to create and innovate. Innovation, of course, means doing something we already know but in a slightly different way that produces a preferred result. In other words, one that's a little more customer centric now that we've collected that kind of information and perspective. And of course, there's one more very important piece here, which is to adapt and align. I was talking to a leader just last week who said, everybody is really enjoying the fact that we can see each other around the world We've been so siloed in our different areas by the brick and mortar that we operate in in our time zones. We're now being much more thoughtful about coming together as one team and being able to appreciate the diversity of points of view. That's an example of something that's a new way of working that you might want to adopt rather than going back to the familiar uh, regional meetings, um, or getting on airplanes and having everybody have the lost productivity of travel. There might be some other things. You've learned some protocols about how to manage meetings and how to get to decisions and how to communicate in this environment where we don't get to be physically together. Those could be real value adds to productivity and to community and collaboration inside your organization. So take a little time to figure out what do we want to adapt to as good practice that we learned during this time? And how do we get everybody on board and not fall back to the old habits? So have some patience with each other and remember compassionate curiosity with yourselves, with your customers, and with everybody around you in the workplace as we all return to creating a brand new way of being in the workplace. If you enjoyed these first three ideas that I've shared with you, there's more from where that came. In the link down below, 
There is a field guide, Return to Work Better Than You Left. And we've taken some time to work through a number of best practices for you. A 30-day plan. What are the things to do in that first month? You might do it a little faster. You might do it a little slower. But a step-by-step process where you can bring everybody along and roll into 60 days and then 90 days. It will take all of us a while to adjust. And having a, a roadmap can be really useful to managing your own set of emotions and being able to be a good role model for all of the members of your team.